Hello, beautiful people, and welcome, hi, to the Kerara pre-release video. Let's address the elephant in the room. The upcoming patch is not great. It's not looking great, at least. There's not much content coming. It is what it is. It's kind of a dead patch. But it wants you to try Star Rail. They're depriving you from content in Genshin to incentivize you to do that. So, Carrera is being released at a little bit of an unfortunate moment where people just care a lot less about the game. It doesn't mean that her kit is like all that uninteresting though. The kit that they gave her is actually pretty cool. I, I kind of like it. It is, I don't want to say unique because it is kind of a copy paste of, of, of some things that, that have already been done. But it's like an amalgamation of a bunch of stuff that does end up being at least a pretty new, yeah, a pretty new unit with a bunch of new things to bring to the table. So let's get right into it. So. First thing you're gonna notice is she ascends with HP percent. Base attack 223, a little low. Base HP 12180, which is kinda low for HP scalers, but it's not very low. Like there's some characters that have less than 10,000 base HP. So this is pr pretty much average for an HP scaler. Base defense, a bit low, but not completely unplayable. She's still not very tanky in her terms of defense, but uh, a lot of people are gonna end up building a bunch of HP on her, so it won't be too big of a deal. So let's get into what she does. Uh, we can skip over the uh, uh, skip over the normal attacks because it's not like there's all that much uh, of interest here and go right to the skill. She's a sword user, by the way. So, E, Meow to your kick. Uh, it has a press and a hold. The press leaps into the air with all the agility of a cat passing through the bushes and thwacks her foes with a flying kick that deals AoE dendro damage while creating a shield of safe transport. This will also briefly apply dendro to Kirara. Uh, the shield will absorb dendro damage with higher effectiveness, blah blah blah. It's based on her max HP and uh, if you create a new one, it stacks on the previous one uh, and it resets duration. Her hold is basically Sayuzi, uh, except it also gives you the shield. Uh, the main difference is, uh, from what I understand, you don't need to actually be moving. Sayuzi, if you like, if you're not touching your your, your W key or anything, it's gonna keep rolling in the same direction, which can make it pretty hard to control if you want to only be hitting one enemy, because you're gonna need to like, brrr, and your camera is gonna go crazy and it's gonna be a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, Kirara doesn't have that. She will only move like based on your arrow keys. So it's gonna be a little bit easier to control. It also, it increases the damage of the hit at the end. This has a standard ICD, which means that if it is possible to like stay on the same target and get a hit every time that it should theoretically be possible to, which is every 0.5 seconds, that means that you'll be able to apply Dendro twice per 2.5 seconds, which is actually pretty good. Like that's pretty good Dendro application. Uh, you do need to be on field for it. It lasts 10 seconds with a cooldown of eight to 12. So the high, longer you stay in it, the, the longer it is. And now finally, you've got the Q. Smash opponents with a special delivery package, blah, blah, blah. It deals some damage, it leaves some mines, and the mines also deal damage. The ratio for this is actually relatively high, but one thing that's like good to keep in mind is that just because a skill has a relatively high like damage multiplier doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually gonna do that much damage. It can do a reasonable amount of damage, but it doesn't have a lot of the things that you would, could have access to on power characters or stuff like that. And even then, right? That's not enough to carry a kit. Cause I wanna bring your attention to Amber's ult, which is almost as much damage. And like, are you playing Amber for this? No. So putting her on your team just for this, not a good idea. It's a nice little upside to have if you do decide to put her on your team. That being said, her shield skills with HP, not with attack. And so if you do decide to play her, you'll basically be choosing between either building her for her damage or building her for her shield. One of her passives kind of helps with that. So every thousand max HP will increase the damage dealt by me out of your kick by 0.4%. Cool. Thing is, your base HP is 12k. You're getting flat HP from your flower and maybe some unlucky substats of about 5k. So she starts with basically 17k. So she gets 0.4% times 17, which is 6.8%. An HP sense will give you 46.6% max HP. Let's just round it to make it easier. About 50% with her base HP of 12K, that's about 6K. 6K is 3.2% damage. That's from a main stun. In other words, because none of her damage directly scales with her HP, this isn't like you're getting something, uh, like you're basically double dipping into a stat and getting some value out of that like it is on Nahida with her EM to damage percent and crit scaling or Al Haitham. It's just, you're getting a tiny little bit of damage out of your HP, but it really is an incredibly minor amount. It's basically irrelevant. Like every 10k HP is 4%. Honestly, if she didn't have this passive, it wouldn't really change all that much. 
Um, her essential one passive makes it so that if you're holding your E instead of just stopping it, you can gain stacks of whatever the f this is, reinforced packaging. And basically for each stack of that, you will gain a stronger shield when you release your E. Uh, so basically this can increase your shield by up to 60% if you're holding for a long time or if you're doing a short hold. So just like hold and then immediately release. It increases it by 20%, which is actually pretty reasonable. The main thing about this is that she's kind of an overworld unit. Her E hold, right? It lets you climb easier. It lets you move faster. Very cool. That, that's useful overworld stuff. In terms of combat, it's not that great. The Denver application can be pretty decent, but you also have to keep in mind that in order to get that application, you need to be holding your E, and you can't be doing normal attacks, you can't be doing any any other stuff. And then on top of that, it can last up to 10 seconds, but then it's on cooldown. And even if you do decide to go for something like Sack, okay, you hold it for 10 seconds, you get the kick at the end, it procs Sack, you get another another E, you do the kick at the end, your Sack is on cooldown, it doesn't proc. Oh, well that's unfortunate. Basically, holding this is a little sus in combat, unless you're using it mainly for the Dendro application. It's not really gonna be enough damage for it to like do that much if you're holding it in a Quicken team, but the somewhat high Dendro application paired with movement uh, can actually make this a viable option in Nilo teams. Now, a lot of the issues that Nilo teams can run into is, or stems from the fact that they take a lot of self damage. And that self damage is Dendro damage. Dendro shields protect against Dendro damage a lot more, right? 250% effectiveness. Basically makes your shield 2.5 times more tanky. That's huge. So if you're not actually getting hit by enemies and the only self damage that you take is from your, or the only damage that you take is from your self damage, if you're going triple HP, you can have your shield uh, hover around 10k HP with a sub 10 second cooldown. So you can get twice, like two of them per 20 second rotation that stack with each other if the first one's still alive when you get the second one, which it can because it lasts longer than the cooldown is. And that's before looking at the, that's before looking at the higher effectiveness against, uh, against Zendro, which basically brings this to theoretically an amount of Dendro damage that can be mitigated by the shield to be around 25k per shield for a total of about 50k. That's generally gonna be enough to sustain your self damage. Now the potential issue with that is that here we're assuming that you're not getting hit by the enemies. And if you're getting hit by an enemy for 3k, your shield is losing 3k HP, so the amount of damage that you can make it mitigate from like self damage goes from 26 to 18, right? So that's, that's 7, 7.5k that you're losing. Basically because enemies are unlikely to only be doing dendro damage to you, even if this is up to like 25-ish k per shield, uh, and this is with, uh, with a short hold, even if it's up to 25k per shield, it's still kind of not really that if you ever get hit at all. If you're playing really well, I could see this making some uh, healerless Nilo teams playable, but it would be something to be careful with. And I wouldn't expect that that's something that you'll be able to do and like be like, okay, well, I don't have a, I don't want to play a healer for my Nilo team, so I'll just get her and I'll be fine. And then you get her and then you're disappointed because you still fucking die. <laughs> the main thing that she has going for her is that this shield is actually pretty good. It would be kind of underwhelming if you could only get one per rotation, but you can get two. You can also decide, okay, well, I want to get a bigger shield in this case, so I'm going to hold it for longer, and instead of it being 10k, it's going to be around 14k. Now, yeah, this can this can actually, like, if you're using Prototype Ember Nida, it might be enough healing for you. But again, right, it's, it's very dependent on how well you play. Before we take a look at the damage, which, like, we will, I just want to, like, make it very clear. This is not really a unit that's all that focused on damage. This is a pretty decent decent uh, four-star shield option unit if you're looking for defensive utility in your team that needs dendro. If you're looking for more defensive utility in your, in your Nilo team, if you're looking for defensive utility in your Quicken team. Let's look at the damage numbers now. The top E is 176.8%, the hold E is 57.1% per time that it hits the enemy with 244.8% at the end. Now, because of that, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do basically the same thing as you do with, uh, with Sayu. Uh, with Sayu, you can tap E, or you can do a short hold into E. And the basic difference is, well, it just does more damage. But also, and more importantly, it generates more particles. Because the way that Kirana generates particles is she generates a particle from hitting an enemy during her E with a four second cooldown. So the first enemy she hits, she generates a particle. And then after four seconds, the next enemy she hits generates a particle. And three energy from the uh, E, like the either the press or the 
final hit from the hold hitting the enemy, which means that if you just tap E, you get three particles. If you short hold into release, you'll get one particle and then three particles, so four. You'll get a stronger shield, you'll get more damage, you'll get more energy. The only reason not to do it is that the animation will be a, a little bit longer, but I'd say that for most people, that's still gonna be the main thing that you want to be doing. If you're looking at hold E and like keep staying in the hold E, you can get up to, I think, 20. It might be 19 or 21. This, this shit is always a pain. Instances of this damage, and because it's standard ICD, assuming that everything goes right, you can get up to eight uh, elemental applications from those 20 hits, plus one from the final hit. So nine elemental applications, which is actually pretty good. But we're assuming that everything goes right, and usually with characters like this, it kind of doesn't. So I would more realistically expect something like six to seven instead of the nine. But that's still a, a somewhat reasonable amount of dendro application. The only real issue with that is that, like, that's that's a character being on field. And other on fielders can very much, like, pretty easily compete with this amount of damage. And then on top of that, they can also compete with the elemental application. But then on top of that, they can trigger effects that happen on normal attacks, like yeah, Sinto's Burst and uh, Elan's Burst. So a lot of the time, she's not going to be the, the, the prime carry, like, driver option. Uh, you can use her, because, like, realistically like I've, I've played some sayu teams they're kind of fun it's usable but it's definitely not gonna be the main way to use her if you're using her just as a, like an e-bot where you swap into her short hold e burst and then 10 seconds later swap into her again and then swap out she has a pretty underwhelming amount of damage so this is with the standards that i usually use are pretty close to kqm standard up to five ish k uh damage per second which is fine but it's not great and more importantly, you have to sacrifice a pretty decent amount of shields in order to get that. And the amount of damage that you gain is like fine, but it's not that huge of a deal. Now for context, a like good team generally does anywhere at like C0 uh, four star weapons, generally does anywhere between 40k if it's a like team that's in a bad situation for it like, like if it's an aoe focused team in single target or something like that uh up to like 60k with the stronger ones being able to uh, reach a little bit above that practically you don't actually get that you get a little bit less because well that's assuming that the enemy doesn't move that the enemy is always hittable that you're spawning right next to the enemy that you don't have to group them and all that but I, I'm just using this number to like put into con, uh, put put in context that this is not a very high amount, and it's not gonna be like the main difference between you clearing a chamber and not clearing it. And because of that, I would generally just recommend using her as a as a shield bot. That being said, if you want, if you like looking at the funny number, uh, her burst does have a reasonably high multiplier, and if it crits, it can actually deal more damage by itself than the whole damage that she should be doing per rotation because you're likely not going to have 100% crit so the average damage is going to be lower than the damage if you do crit if you like seeing big numbers like that's a thing you can do of course but it's definitely not like the main way to use her either right the the optimal use for her all in all it's really just she's got a decent shield and that decent shield is dendro which means that it can be pretty nice in some bloom teams or virgin teams uh, that being said in virgin teams i'd be a little bit careful because you're either going to end up playing her as a solo dendro in which case you need to actually use her e in which case you need to apply hydro without normal attacking so that kind of disqualifies singso and Nilan from being good options in the team and that limits your options a lot and if you're playing double dendro it's hard to justify putting her on your team just for that when you could just be using another defensive utility focus unit like Bennett or something that does more her ult is a 15 second cooldown with a 60 energy cost now if you're generating four particles per e and you e twice on a 20 ish second rotation realistically because she generates all her particles in like one, one bunch you basically have the choice, either you swap out and you funnel her particles into someone else, or you catch your own particles. For now, let's look at what happens if you catch your own particles. So if you do short holds, you can get four twice, so eight. Assuming she's the only dendro on the team and you're playing with uh, an average particle generation team. So I guess we can take a look at the either either double dendro or uh, quicken team with uh, electro resonance. So obviously, if you're getting electro resonance, you might catch one of those particles and you're getting, generating a lot. So if you're using, I don't know, could say official, that goes for a 25 second rotation, but that's still not really much of a problem. You get an average of 14 particles from official and then a bunch more from could say. Let's assume four E's plus the four H's that aren't caught from the resonance. 
Plus, let's say you're using Kazuhas, that's another six if you're doing two top E's. Uh, it's a lot of particles. <laughs> For the, the, the quick, quicken teams generate a lot of particles, generally, because the units that are good in quicken often generate a lot of particles, and then the electro resonance generate a lot of particles as well. So, clear particles. Uh, two from enemy dying, which leaves you for total energy before ER around 50, cost is 60, ER is around 120%. If you're using a double dendro team, actually let's look at let's look at the Nilo teams actually uh, instead. Uh, Nilo teams, you're generally gonna have double dendro. So let's say you're playing Karara, Nahida, Nilo, Kokomi. So that would be Nahida's E doesn't line up well with uh, 20 second rotations because it's it can generate energy up, uh, up to once every eight seconds. So you get like two and a half, but you can't rely on two and a half. So generally I like just rounding down to two and taking the L. Uh, but even then, uh, energy costs aren't that high. Her energy generation is not like insane, but most of the teams where you'll end up playing her, you either are playing Double Dendro or you're playing Quicken. So her ER requirements are very, very easy to meet and you don't really need much ER. Making Fav a generally suboptimal option for her. I know, I know. Who am I and what have I done with the Jeff? I know. Nilo teams often don't care that much about the energy generation. So your other characters don't take advantage of Fav and she doesn't need the ER, so she doesn't take advantage of Fav. Quicken teams, uh, especially the ones with uh, with uh, if it's an official, pretty similar. If you're playing her in some other team, if you're playing her with Sino, for example, then then Fav can start becoming a better option. But uh, we'll we'll get into why she's not really th that great of an option for Sino later. Anyways, I think with that all out of the way, we can get into the usual uh, sheet that I do for this. So let's start with weapons. Key is generally going to be her best in slot because it gives you HP, which makes your shield bigger, and it gives you EM and it gives your team EM, and most of the teams that you'll consider her in very much care about that EM. Generally in Nilo teams, you're kind of you kind of want your Hydro to be your trigger, not your Dendro, so the EM on her won't matter that much, but you're still giving EM to your team. That being said though, if you are playing in Nilo teams, you want to give this to Nilo, not to her. I'm not actually sure if key passive stacks if you have more than one though. Do we have a knower? Can't stack? Okay, I'll take your word for it. Uh, but yeah, so key, key can be a fine option if you're going for um, if you're going for her in a Quicken team. It is also still fine on a Nilo team just because it's the only sword that gives a bunch of HP. But it also might override your Nilo key and make it so that you lose some EM because of it. Uh, other than that, I mean, you could use Jade Cutter if you have one lying around for the same reason, just because it's a little bit more HP. We unfortunately don't actually have a sword that gives us HP that's not a five star, which means that you can either choose her weapon based on her damage, or uh, you can choose her weapon around what it can provide for your team. You can consider five. You can consider Xyphos, but I would say that the main option to consider would be the Sapwood Blade. The reason for that is because, sure, the Sapwood substat is kind of useless, but all of the substats are kind of useless. None of them make her shield bigger, and her damage isn't really high enough that it will matter too much to get more damage. It, like, it, it's fine, you can go for it. If you do decide to go for it, you can also consider stuff like Iron Sting. Uh, if you're playing her in Quicken, uh, you can consider stuff like, I mean, and really any other weapon. Weapons, right? Anything that provides damage can potentially, well, provide damage. I know, crazy. Uh, you can consider Slack Sword uh, as well because it can increase her, uh, her her damage a little, her energy generation. But and say that as a general rule, Key would probably be her best option. Then Sap would. Then kind of a, a three-way tie between Fab, Xyphos, and Slack Sword, and then Iron Sting. If you're going for damage, you can also, if you have it, if you've been playing for long enough, you can consider the Festering Desire. Probably be better than the Iron Sting. Well, not necessarily. Only really if you're going for an on-field build, because off-field, most of your damage comes from Burst. Key, general, best in slot, makes shield bigger. Sapwood, best four-star slash free-to-play option, gives teammate damage. It's EM, but it translates to damage. Five, good if you need the energy on someone. But like I mentioned earlier, a lot of the teams that you're, uh, you'll are you be using with her don't really need the energy. Xyphos, same as Fav, but kind of worse, unless you're building a lot of EM, which you don't really want to be doing. Slack Sword, fine for energy, okay. -ish. Iron Sting, fine for damage, I guess. Festering Desire, fine for damage, only for on field. All right, cool. I forget Freedom Sworn, yes I did, thank you. <laughs> Freedom Sworn, good if your character or carry uses normal slash, slash CA slash lunge. But generally will be a worse option than Sapwood Blade. 
because 120 EM is just more valuable than 16% attack or 20% attack, right? Or I guess, or if damage is very split, you have a lot of units that do damage on your team. Artifact sets. Again, right? Figuring out what artifacts that you put on her is going to depend on which team you're using with her. Because of the fact that she is a shielder, uh, where the strength of the shield actually matters, some four-star artifact sets that you would usually consider as being really good might lose a little bit of value because it's going to be a lot harder to get a strong shield with those four-star artifact sets, especially considering that a lot of people just don't really farm for them. If you're using her in a quicken team, you don't really need deep wood unless you're playing double dendro and another character on the team actually does dendro damage if you're playing her in uh, in a team like that then the best damage weapon that you can get for your team is generally going to be either instructor or noblesse whereas usually instructor can be a very viable option i would actually likely lean towards noblesse a little bit more on her just because it lets you have five star pieces which makes your shield a lot bigger and I think that matters a little bit more on her than healing matters on healers. So I would probably recommend that. Uh, you you could go Millilith, but you won't get good uptime on it unless you're on fielding her. Uh, so, four piece, noblesse, generally good. If you're playing her in a Nilo team or in a team where you have another source of dendro damage, uh, like a Burgeon team or like a spread carry team, four piece, deep wood, best in slot if dendro shred is needed. Uh, four piece, instructor, good if your sh shield is enough, uh, but again, that depends on how well you play. I probably wouldn't recommend uh, four piece instructor and Nilo teams because not only do you care about the shield a little bit more, but also it can actually be pretty hard to have her trigger a reaction in that team because generally you want your hydro units again to be to be the ones triggering reactions. So while you can use instructor, just 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 go deep wood. If you're going for like damage and you have another unit on deep wood, you could go for something like gilded if you're playing her in a spread team or like emblem if you're playing her in a, a hyper team where you're focusing on her burst nuke damage. Uh, you could could go two piece two piece hp hp good if you really want a big shield but it's not worth it if if you're losing deep wood in a team that cares about it right deep wood is too important to have i guess you could also consider two piece er if you're struggling with your er requirements good if you need the er but generally that sh it shouldn't be too much of a problem okay artifact stats hp slash hp slash hp yes other things no cool that's not how you spell things. It's funnier this way, it's fine. You can build her for damage, but again, at that point, you just have other options that will do better. So I would just stick to those instead of using her. If you really want to do it, you can do attack slash dendro crit. If you want to really balance things out, you could go HP dendro crit, but like, uh, you're not getting the best of, the, of both worlds, you're getting the worst of both worlds. You're getting a weak shield with the weak damage. <laughs> like, I, you can do that, I guess. If you're playing her, I guess, with Kanaka and Anilo team, you could go for a bunch of EM as well. In general, you can also just have EM as a substat. Uh, it's not that far behind. Or EM as a, as a, as a sense, sorry. EM, Dendro, Rip, eh. It's not that far behind attack if you're playing in a Quicken team. It's generally not going to be that good otherwise. Finally, let's take a look at her teams. So! I would stick to either Quicken or Nilo Blue. I think that using her in other teams can be cool and all, but you're not really taking advantage of her kit all that well, or her kit is becoming an obstacle to other things. So in Nilo teams, good. In Quicken teams, good. Uh, I'd say she's probably a little bit more valuable to Nilo teams than Quicken teams. However, Quicken teams still don't have the greatest defensive utility options. You can use Yao Yao, which provides a lot of healing, but in order to take full advantage of that, you need to spend a bunch of time on field with her. You can use Baiju, but his shield is a f***ing joke and will not really be that good at uh, preventing one-shots or or uh, interruption. So that can be a nice uh, addition to the roster, I guess, for, the, for those Quicken teams. Other than that, you can have, obviously, all of the other dendro archetypes you can use her in uh, uh virgin teams but it's not too good because in virgin teams usually you're gonna need dendro you're gonna need hydro you're gonna need pyro if she's the only dendro unit then she can't normal attack because you need to actually spend time on your e because her dendro application outside of her e is kind of a joke so that disqualifies a bunch of the good hydro units like Sinso, like yelan from being able to work which is kind of uh, 
annoying at best. You can use units like Ayato and Kokomi instead. Uh, generally, their hydro application is a bit slower, so you're gonna need to have to go for something like uh, Curry or Oven Team. Otherwise, you're just gonna struggle to generate blooms so that you can burgeon. So uh, the sub archetypes of burgeon, you can go for Curry, which is burgeon with an Electro unit. Okay, I guess. Frid or Oven, which is uh, Virgin with Cryo. Okay, I guess. You can also play a double Hydro Virgin team, which can be fine. Like, yeah, you go Ayato and Kokomi. I, I guess I should probably change this to okay, I guess. But again, generally, you'll just have better options. Hyperloom generally cares even more about having a care, uh, having normal attacks because it uh, synergizes even better with characters like Sinso and Yelan. So it's... Uh, same for Hyper Fridge. Uh, Salads, no, just don't, just don't, don't, don't do that to yourself. Honestly, like if you're not, if you're not planning on using her in one of these two archetypes, then I would say that from a meta perspective, she's not all that worth getting. If you are planning on using her in one of those two archetypes, and you find yourself in need of a defensive utility focused unit, then she can be a pretty decent unit to get. You can also obviously make her work in these teams. I will definitely be trying to do that. Uh, when she comes out. Hopefully, maybe, perhaps, I get pleasantly surprised by something. There's some room for her to be able to be decent there because you do you do get like a lot of damage mitigation against dendro damage, so against virgin damage, but I wouldn't get my hopes too high. Expect her to be reasonably good, decent defensive focus unit, and that's it. Right, we're gonna take a look at the constellations as well. Uh, constellation one! Every 8,000 max HP Kirara possesses will cause her to create one extra cat grass cardamom, which is the mines that she creates when she uses her burst, up to four. Realistically, you're not caring that much because if you build for damage, you're not gonna have that much HP, and if you build for HP, you're not gonna have that much damage. But then on top of that, the mines are 60%. The skill damage itself is almost a thousand. Getting up to four more mines is a nice little increase, but it's really not that big. It can be useful because it can mean that you have slightly better dendro coverage in AoE, but it's it's not a big deal. C2 is a co-op constellation. From the wording, it doesn't seem like it does literally anything if you're not in co-op. It makes it so that when you co Allied with allies, you give them a shield when you're in your E. That's it. C3 increases E damage. C4, it gives her a coordinated attack when her shield is up every four seconds. 3.8, but every four seconds, which can help with dendro application if you end up using her in a team where you don't spend a lot of time on her. It is a decent amount of additional damage. It's a, it's a nice, useful thing. Not a huge deal, but it does help with uh, with application. So it's 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 good to have. Uh, but it is too slow to be like the main form of dendro application from off field on your team, unless you have very low standards, I guess. Uh, C5 makes her old talent higher, which is more nuke, I guess. Cool, have fun. And C6 is just a nice little upside, 12% more damage percent to everyone on your team. Generally translates to like a 5-ish percent more DPS, which is cool. That's nice. It's a, it's a useful thing. It's not like a flashy thing, but it is not bad. Overall, her constellations are, I'd say, pretty average for a 4-star. C4 is pretty good. Every constellation before that f***ing sucks. She, she's very mid. <laughs> That's not necessarily a bad thing, right? But she is definitely very mid. Uh, she can be a useful unit if you're looking for shields, but uh, yeah, that's kind of it. And that kind of does it, actually. All in all, I'm expecting her, like I said, to be a pretty okay unit. Nothing, nothing too crazy. I don't expect her to disappoint me as much as Kave did, hopefully. But yeah, like at the end of the day, she is a unit that is mainly focused on her defensive utility. So if that's not something you care about too much, then there's not that much of a reason to go for her. Uh, she can function fine in a quicken team with Yai. Definitely not what I would recommend for Yuimiya. Although I guess it is a shield and Yuimiya does like shields and it is a decently sized shield. So it, like it's fine, I guess. Sure. Why not? Probably not what I would recommend, but it works. Sure. But yeah, it's uh, I don't think it's a, this, this is a character that I would ever recommend really like actively going for. All in all, just looking pretty okay. In any case, uh, I hope you enjoyed the pre-release. Sorry that it is coming out a bit later than usual. I hope my editors managed to get it done before the uh, before the release of the patch. But if they don't, it's not their fault. I am very last minute. If they do, make sure you say thank you in the comments. I am very thankful to have them. But uh, yeah, so I think that's going to be it. Thank you for watching. And uh, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys around. See you.